Hey, happy gardeners. Welcome to the Hawaii Urban Gardener. Today we're going to talk about pollinating our plants to get fruits or vegetables. Um, it was requested uh, in one of the comments on how to do self-pollination. Um, I don't know about the rest of Oahu, but where I live, we don't really have much bees. I don't really see them around. Maybe a carpenter bee or a bumblebee here and there. But um, I don't know why that is, and it's very sad. Of course, we need them. But... Um, you can pollinate your flowers without bees. You just have to be on it and check your plants maybe every day. Just take, give a look and see if they have flowers. We'll go over some things about male and female flowers and the differences of them. If you already know about pollination and you're an expert gardener or if you've been doing it for a long time, this is probably not the video for you because it's probably really boring. But um, this is for people that just started to get into gardening and it's a great thing and I hope everybody learns and starts to garden because you can be self-sufficient especially with um, high inflation these days with food and talk about food shortages that you can do these things and grow vegetables in small containers and pots and that's the point of my whole channel that even if you live in the city and you have a small condo or just a balcony you can grow these things um, and it's not very hard it just takes some patience and a little bit of knowledge and you don't have to always check on your plants all the time because I'm a very busy person as well. So I don't spend too much time on my plants. I just make sure that they're watered, fertilized, and when it's time to pollinate, I do it and it takes less than probably five seconds to do. So let's get into the video and I'll show you how to pollinate. So I have one of my zucchini plants here potted in one of these fabric pots. And uh, I noticed a female blossom has blossomed. Usually when you first start your plants, they will only have a few male flowers. And the way to tell male flowers is, this is a male flower. It's just skinny and straight down on the stem. Whereas this has a little zucchini on the bottom. You can tell it's a fat fruit. And if it's not uh, pollinated by the male flower, it just uh, shrivels up and falls down and dies. So this one is also a male flower, skinny bottom. But this one coming up over here is also a female. So I'm gonna take this male flower and show you how to self-pollinate. So I took the male flower off the stem there and I took all the petals off. And in the middle, you'll see that tip with a lot of pollen. And we're gonna just put that tip right inside and touch the middle of the female flower and just rub it around all over and that's how you self-pollinate the female flower so you can guarantee that you're going to have lots of zucchini if you're not um fortunate where Sometimes the male flower falls off and then a female flower blossoms and you don't have any males. If you think you're going to soon get a female to blossom, obviously, like I said, you can tell the bottom has a little zucchini. You can snip them off before they die and put it in the fridge in a Ziploc bag. And that way when you're ready and this blossoms, you can always have a male uh, flower to pollinate to guarantee you have one. This is my Moneymaker tomato, and to pollinate tomatoes, it's su super easy. For their flowers, they don't have male and female flowers. Each flower has both the male and female parts. So what you're going to do, and I know it looks silly, is you're going to flick it with your finger and just vibrate that flower so the pollen shakes loose and it will hit the tip of the flower, which is the female part. You can use a Q-tip or some people use electric toothbrushes brushes that vibrate to just flick the flower but that's how you pollinate it and for sure you will get tomatoes and it's that easy. Here's an eggplant. This is my Japanese green eggplant and with eggplant they are uh, one flower that has both the pollen for the male and the female parts so it's not like cucumbers or watermelon or squash. So most of the pollen, I already pollinated this but we'll do it again just for good measure, is on the inside of the petals like right there. So you, I just get a brush. Uh, with eggplant, they're a little bit different from tomato. And you brush the tip of the, 
flower with the pollen and that's how you get it to pollinate. It's hard to do with one hand because I have the camera in the other but that's how you pollinate eggplant and it should form. If you don't the flowers just drop and you don't get any fruit or vegetables. Most of my flowers on my chili pepper plants have already um, gotten pollinated but I have one right here and all I do is every day if there's a flower I check it and I just do the same thing as I do to the tomato. I just kind of flick it gently, not too hard. And sometimes you'll see a whole dust of uh, white pollen and that's a good sign because uh, the pollen will reach to the tip there that's kind of purplish. And that they're the same as tomatoes, not like the eggplant. You can just um, flick it and um, it has both the male pollen and the female part on the flower and it should pollinate. And this is what it looks like once the flower drops off. It starts to grow and then it becomes bigger, such as that one and this one. That's a big one. But yeah, this one has a lot of little peppers, so a lot got pollinated. There's another one just by doing that flicking method. There's another baby one and another one here. So super easy for tomatoes and peppers. Sometimes you can just shake the branch and just a little shaking in the wind also helps with pollination when you got lots of flowers on the tree. Same thing if you don't do it and you forget and the flower dies before you pollinate, it'll just drop off and die and no fruit will come out, no veggies, no peppers, no tomatoes. For melons or cucumbers, this one's a Korean melon, the yellow melons that are sweet that you can find at an Asian grocery store or Palama supermarket. This is what a um, male flower looks like. It, if you look inside, it has a tip full of yellow pollen and the outside doesn't have any fruit at the end. It's just like a regular flower. This is a female. You can see it doesn't have any um, yellow tip on the inside. And um, hopefully you can see that. It's almost like an opening and that's to take in the pollen and the outside of it after the flower is the melon. So this is the baby melon. So if you don't get it fertilized or a pollinator doesn't fertilize it for you, it will just die and drop off, even though you can see the little melon. Once it get po gets pollinated, it just starts growing bigger and bigger and the flower falls off. So what I did was um, I took all the petals off the male flower and I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's just the tip and it has yellow pollen on it. And I'm just gonna go in there and just put the tip of the pollen in there. If it's easier for you, because it is tiny, if you have big fingers, you can use the toothbrush, um, a toothbrush or a paintbrush that I showed and just uh, run it over the pollen with the brush and just uh, put it in there like so. But I used it with the eggplant, so I don't want to cross-pollinate. But, you know, you touch the male flower pollen with the brush and brush it in there. Just make sure you get it in there. And just touch the inside of the female flower and you're set. So these are some of the beans I've talked about um, in my t garden tour. These are long contender beans and they're a bush bean like I explained, which means you don't need a trellis. Usually beans need a trellis and they climb and they have tendrils and they have to hang on to something. And they would probably, if I put them here, make a vine all over my stair uh, rails. But these are not that kind of plant, which is great. Um, it keeps neat and it just grows straight up and produces many beans. This, however, when they produce flowers, such as this, that's their flower, uh, you don't need to pollinate. This is an interesting plant because it just self-pollinates and you don't have to do anything such as with tomatoes and eggplants or watermelons. Uh, to have beans. It just grows and it does its own thing. Another example of self-pollinating uh, vegetables is the okra plant. Uh, some people don't like okra. I don't mind it, but these are 
some of the buds that are going to come out and it comes out like a white flower it's related to the hibiscus plant i believe and it's really pretty but it only lasts for one day you don't need to touch it or do anything to it and it just produces this kind of okra um, i did have a flower the other day but it dropped so fast that i don't even know where it went but yep another plant where you don't have to pollinate to get vegetables this is the zucchini that i showed you i pollinated there's some there and um, I believe another one over here. And then this one, I didn't show you. I did this another day, but that one's growing to be pretty big. And this one's in a Menehune water bottle. And remember that eggplant? There it is, nice and long. And it's one of the Japanese eggplant that I mentioned that has a lime green color instead of being purple purple excuse me and we have another one on the other side here's another flower that i pollinated but this one i pollinated a while ago and it's also growing one of the eggplants and i believe one is starting right here that got pollinated so it'll come out of that bud and grow like that one here's some of the korean melon for some reason they're slowly growing, not as fast as a cucumber, but they're around. Here's some that I pollinated, and some over there. Oh, I forgot, I just wanted to point out, next to my cucumbers, I have this wonderful tiger melon growing, and I think I showed it to you in my first video, and you could barely see the plant in this big container, but now it's all over the trellis, and you can see some melons popping up and one right here. So I'm excited to see and taste what it tastes like. Supposedly it has a nice floral smell, uh, a little bit watery of a melon compared to other ones, but still interested to try. But the cucumbers have uh, ripened. So I'm gonna harvest some. About three came out. There's one there, and I think the biggest one is over there. So we'll clip some of these off. Look at that. That's a nice uh, pickling cucumber. This is a Wisconsin pickling cucumber. They got different kinds, Chicago and Boston. But I opted to get the Wisconsin ones. They're the perfect size for me, I think. So we should have some more cucumbers coming. This one's a nice big one. But we got um, a bunch of cucumbers right here and right there and some others underneath hiding so we'll still get many more cucumbers and they kind of uh, grow pretty fast so um, here's the three that I can probably put in a salad or just snack on and finally these are the moneymaker tomatoes we've got some here that I was flicking and you know it shook the pollen onto it, and here's a big cluster of some big tomatoes. They're still growing, bigger every day. So yes, very easy to pollinate. So as a bonus, I'm gonna show you some of the dishes we made um, out of our vegetables that we harvested. One of them was the Korean moo that I did in my first video to show that, you know, we don't put this to waste. We do eat these vegetables. I did make a kimchi out of it, just sliced it really thin with a mandolin, and we made, um, kimchi with it and jarred it up. With the cucumbers, the Wisconsin pickling cucumbers, we uh, did a lot of dill pickles and put them in jars. I think uh, so far they just started sprouting. We made four jars of pickles already and more to come. Uh, the rest I think I'll just use fresh in salads. I just didn't want that whole harvest to go bad and mushy because we had so much all at once. With my Roma tomatoes, I had tons of them. I think I counted over 70. So all of most of all of the Roma tomatoes were harvested already. There are only a few on the vine left and I made a marinara sauce with that and we got about three quart jars that I canned myself and made a marinara sauce out of it and it actually came out pretty well. So I hope this video was helpful in learning how to self-pollinate your vegetables and or fruit in order to get more vegetables out of your plants. And anybody can do it. It's not hard at all. 
just make sure you pay attention to your plants and when they flower so you can make sure you get your female flowers and your male flowers. So good luck to you out there if you're starting to garden and I will see you next week with another gardening tip. And if you're new, please consider subscribing and like this video if you found it informative and I'll see you again.